there, and welcome back to Tattooing Table Flip. Today I'll be unboxing Watson and Holmes, the follow-up to both of the Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective sets. You'll have to excuse my voice, I've been uh, a little sick recently, but let's try to get through this as best we can, if you'll bear with me, all right? Thanks. Let's have a look at this thing. Okay, Watson and Holmes. This is the follow-up to Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. It's the same type of box. Uh, looks like it's going to be a different type of game as there's tokens and little figure standees. Let's go ahead and open it up and have a look. As you can see, it still has the same type of sliding drawer. Nice sturdy box, very heavy. That's actually quite hefty. There's a lot of stuff in here. First thing we come upon is the rule book, clearly. As with the others, it's printed on a light style of paper, but uh, very nice. Nice, crisp, clean. Some color artwork for you here. This looks like it's a little bit of how the game is laid out. That's very interesting. This looks like it doesn't play like the two consulting detective sets at all. Hmm. It's going to be a different kind of a game. Here's uh, the first punch board. As I said, looks like it's got the characters here. Investigation tokens, perhaps. Dual-sided, full color, nice and heavy. They're the slick style, not the linen finish, but still very nice quality. Really nice. Some more punch cards. Some carriages that say times five police hats keys whistles <laughs> sherlock and watson silhouettes uh, i'm guessing that's one of the baker street irregulars and then uh, a bunch of the carriage tokens in smaller scale very nice oh i see here we go all right as with the other consulting detective games, these have a case file for what appears to be each case you go through. Shows you the card layout on the front. Level of difficulty is marked with stars, apparently. An audio transcription, so you can listen to it being read instead of reading it out loud yourself. That's slick. I can't wait to uh, scan that code and have a listen. This one is called The Adventure of the Looted Wagon. Case number one. Oh yeah, see, they're all numbered up across the top up here. And I'm not gonna spoil anything, so we'll just take a real brief flip. Oh, it's just two pages. That's all there is. It is absolutely, it's made to look like a folder and that's pretty much all it is. And uh, wow, there's a lot of them in here. Looks like there's a total of 13. Printed on fairly sturdy, not quite cardboard or cardstock, but uh, you know, sturdy paper nonetheless. And uh, wow, these are these cards are huge. Hold on, let me grab my knife. We'll split some open and have a look. It says the mail wagon. The cards are very, very thin, almost dainty. Wow, I can't. They're going to need to be sleeved. Anybody who watches this show knows that I love to sleeve my cards. It uh, just helps prolong the life of them. And these look like little case files. So as you see, it says mail wagon on the front, and then we won't linger on that too long, but each one of those is the same. It's like a piece of paper stuck to the back of it. Oh, there's different styles. Different, slightly different colors. Looks like older or newer. Get down here into these cards. Wow, there is a, a lot here. That's a pretty... <laughs> As you can see, that's a pretty hefty stack of cards and there's a, a whole second stack. Here we have the 
character standees. And down on the bottom are two sets of envelopes. Not really sure what those are for yet, but uh, I'll get the rules read later today and that'll kind of clue me in a little bit. What's really nice is this insert they've included. I wonder if there's anything here. No, oh, no, it's just a spacer. It's nice that they put this insert because now everything will fit fairly neatly back in without, oh, hopefully, without flopping around and or getting crushed. Let me get everything back in here then. And in a nice little surprise, each of these comes boxed with the tray facing outward this way. But if you turn it around, you get the name of the game, a little stamp that says solved, and which technically game in the series, if you will, this is the uh, consulting detective set I unboxed a while ago. That was uh, the Jack the Ripper set. That was number three. This one says number one. I wonder what number two will be. Well, there you have it. Watson and Holmes, the follow-up to each of the two other Sherlock Holmes consulting detective sets and in the same sort of slipcase box. I love that. That means it'll fit perfectly right next to them on my game shelf. That's fantastic. The components of this game are up to snuff. They're pretty good. I'm not crazy about the thinness of the playing cards themselves, but uh, looking through the rule book a little bit, it looks like you move your character pieces around on top of the cards. The cards are laid out in a grid pattern depending on the case. So they, I'll probably end up sleeving them just to help maintain their life, but uh, they should hold up fairly well if you're not like really bashing the plastic stands into them and, and stuff, or you know if you don't get anybody spilling drinks on the table or something. Um, the rule book, is, seems pretty solid. I, like I said, I just, I just glanced a little more through it. And uh, so I'm going to sit down and have a read of it this afternoon and see if I can't get a game in tonight. The case books, or files in this case, are uh, fairly decent quality. I love that they put the QR scan code on those so that you can scan them out and have a listen to somebody reading it for you. Like I'm sure there's probably going to be special like sound effects that sort of thing, you know, so it'll be it'll be a nice little uh, plunge into the atmosphere of the game. Uh, very slick idea. I wish they would have done something similar with the Sherlock Holmes uh, consulting detective sets, the first one, and the Jack the Ripper and West End Adventures sets, because that's really a fantastic idea. The tokens are uh, slick, and the cards as well are slick style. They do not have the linen texture that I like, but... Uh, they're very, very sturdy. I mean, these are really some heavy duty punch board. And so I, I, I foresee they'll, depending on how often you play the game and how often you handle the tokens and the counters, they're probably going to stand up pretty well to gameplay. So I shouldn't worry too much about it, but overall neat looking little game. I can't wait to get it to the table. I love the other two consulting detective sets. They're, they're really fantastic games. There's a lot, a lot of game in both of those boxes. And this one looks like it won't disappoint in that department as well. That's it for me. Hey, if you guys like the show, why don't you give me a thumbs up down there and subscribe to the channel so you can see all the new episodes as they come out. Again, you'll have to pardon my voice. As I've said on a previous unboxing, I've been ill recently, and so my voice has just been wiped out. But it's coming back. It's getting better. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> He says as he coughs. Um, hey, catch us online at BoardGamerBlues.com or you can uh, send us a message at BoardGamerBlues either at Facebook or Twitter or you can send me an email directly. It's Jimmy at BoardGamerBlues.com. That's J-I-M-M-I-E at BoardGamerBlues.com. Tell me what you like to see. I want to get some feedback from you guys. Uh, if you want to see something different happen with the show, like the format or... Uh, suggest some games to be reviewed or unboxed or both if you want to see a new segment or um, uh, any kind of suggestion I'll, even if it's just to say hi shoot us a message and let us know you're out there right and uh, 
I guess I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.